This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is on the hydrosphere, its definition, components, what's included in the hydrosphere, and it's part of the Earth as a System playlist, which covers all the systems that make our planet function. So not to diss on any other sphere in particular, but the hydrosphere, which is Greek for water, the hydrosphere is the majority of our planet on the surface. Now, yes, our planet is all rocks, so that's the geosphere underneath the internal layers from the core to the surface and the crust. But on the crust, what we perceive and see with our eyes is the hydrosphere and this huge expanse of water. The planet is 70% water. 30% land, and that also includes some of the cryosphere and frozen water as well. So it's a huge expanse, massive subject, let's delve into it. Now there are two types of water on this planet. There is the fresh water, which is rivers and streams and on the land, and you also have salt water, which is around 1% average salt concentration and ions in the water that makes it salty. Now it can go as high as 3.5%, but the average is around one and a half to two and a half percent so anything above one percent is classified as salt water so the oceans the seas and this large expanse of water is the salt water and we have certain characteristics compared to the fresh water so from the oceans and seas which are very large bodies of water sitting on top of a solid ocean or sea crust or floor you have the Water that's on the land, on the continents, on the land masses, anything above sea level. So you start with the coastal areas of estuaries, lagoons, wetlands, marshes, swamps, bayous, sounds, inlets, any kind of combination where the ocean is going to meet the fresh water current off the land. And that's also called brackish water, which they change of salt concentration. Then you get the beautiful rivers, the systems and watersheds and drainage basins of rivers flowing through the landscapes, over the landscapes, changing the landscapes, and caused by the force of gravity forcing the water downwards towards the ocean. So based on the amount of water flowing down with gravity over the Earth's surface, or even through the Earth's surface, like infiltrating through soil and rock layers and different uh, levels of porosity and permeability down to groundwater and flowing down through the ground back to the ocean, back to sea level, you have these different variations of rivers you get from tributaries to brooks to streams to these large roaring rivers like the, An the Amazon, the Ganges, the Mississippi, the Danube, all these massive rivers. And of course you get the more calmer rivers that are based on certain stages of the river profile which is more based on gradient and 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 the velocity of water and also on the the gravity that's pushing the water down and you can get these meandering rivers going through lowland or coastal areas on their way back to the ocean which causes things like deltas to be produced where water is going to combine and enter the oceans so from this aerial view looking down on the lower 48 states of America, you see a beautiful Mississippi River and the tributaries, the Missouri, the Ohio, these massive rivers flowing in and accumulating down in Louisiana into the Gulf of Mexico with the Mississippi Delta. And you see how the calves are through from the high peaks of the Rockies to the left and the Appalachians to the right and how it comes in this massive drainage basin. Then we get the largest lake in the world, which is called the Caspian Sea in Asia. It's actually a lake because uh, it is surrounded by land. There's no contact with the ocean. There are rivers that feed it in its lower depression. And the deepest lake is Lake Baikal, also in Asia. And you have other great lakes, like in African Great Lakes, like uh, Lake Kivu and Lake Victoria, and also the American Great Lakes, the five Great Lakes, which is Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Ontario, Lake Huron, and Erie. And these bodies of water sit on top of the land masses and occasionally connect with the ocean through rivers. So the hydrosphere has tons of just amazing beauty and all power and energy. The flow of water over the landscape can create things like waterfalls where there's a change in elevation. 
of the landscape and the water's going to drop down and create these beautiful sites around the world like Angel Falls, Victoria Falls and Niagara Falls. And also on, on the ocean surface you get the combination of the wind creating these beautiful waves and swells and coastal waves to surf on and you get the beautiful carving of landscapes as well with water going down towards sea level you get these beautiful geomorphological processes that happen also with the change in sea level in general the change based on temperature and ice ages and glacial periods you get the change of sea level which can either expose more land or cover more land up which is what we're seeing right now in today's today's world you can also look and observe the effect of humans to modify or block the flow of water going down to the ocean which is dams and reservoirs and the great example is lake mead in the american southwest which is the largest body of fresh water basically created by man behind the hoover dam another great feature to observe if you can is a geyser where the water is superheated by active magma under the ground superheating the water into steam and exploding up in the air over different time periods awesome thing to see Now, obviously, with the hydrosphere, we're going to discuss the water cycle. Now, the water cycle in different sections based on the evaporation of surface water, evapotranspiration of the land, and obviously the oceans and seas and rivers and lakes, into the atmosphere, cooling down to a certain dew point, level of condensation with CCN, which is the particulates in the air, to create rain droplets, and they get big enough, they grow, cohesion, Bergeron process to then fall as rain, as precip, different variables of precip, on the ground, onto the Earth's surface to continue the water cycle back again, eventually back to the oceans. So this continuous flow of water in different states of matter from water, ice, and water vapor, we in the hydrosphere focus on the liquid water as opposed more than the water vapor or the frozen component. So the hydrosphere is this beautifully complex flow of water in different areas of the world, both oceans and on land, terrestrial, with rivers, and the flow and how we observe from different areas and how the cycle of water moves around the planet is incredible.